Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That, and today we're going to be reviewing the Three Legged Things Airhead Pro tripod head. I recently went on a trip to Berlin, and of course, I did some photography. Now, I usually take with me this Manfrotto, this is the 498RC2 tripod head. Uh, I've had it for probably coming up to 10 years now. It's a, it's a little bit heavy and I was just wanting to kind of reduce the weight of my uh, travel photography kit. So I was looking for a lightweight alternative and I stumbled across this really cool looking tripod head. We're gonna go over the pros and cons and whether I'm deciding to keep this or not. Firstly, the pros. I think that, first of all, it just looks really nice and this is probably one of the main reasons why I bought it. I was just browsing through Amazon, looking at tripod heads and yeah, it caught my eye. I mean, compared to this, which is just a bit bland looking, I really do admire the uh, the design and the color choices that Three Legged Things put into all of their products. Another pro is that this is uh, incredibly light. I mean, compared to this, this is about nearly 700 grams. This is about 380, 370 grams. So it's nearly half the weight of this. I really like the, the knob as well to lock it down. It's big and chunky, the knurling on it just feels nice and it doesn't require a lot to, to lock it. I mean, it really only does require probably a quarter of a turn and it is rock solid. Uh, I had my Mamiya RZ67 uh, on the tripod head and I was not worried about it moving at all. Once you lock it down, it's really not gonna go anywhere. It has two knobs, one to obviously lock the main ball and one to just allow the tripod head to twist. And that's really about it. I mean, it does the job. It's a tripod head at the end of the day. There's not really too many parts to it. Now let's move on to the cons. Uh, the first one, and it's not specific to the Airhead Pro, it's more to just the quick release plates. The Manfrotto RC2, when you put it down on the surface, it's flush, so it doesn't rock. With Arca Swish, you have these two bolts sticking out. So basically the plate just pivots. And I find it really annoying because when I'm using the Mamiya, I do a lot of the time kind of put it on a surface and then I just like kind of tilt it up because it's quite heavy. I'll try and rest it on anything I can. And I found that with, with this Arca Swiss plate, it just become more difficult to do that. Now I understand that obviously these two bolts, they obviously stop the plate from sliding backwards and forwards. Um, and I got this quick lever version because I thought it was gonna be a little bit different. And when I saw that this quick release plate was actually square, I was thinking, oh brilliant, they've designed it in a way that I could really just lock this plate down in any orientation, uh, which I really like the idea of. And that isn't really the case. You can only put it down this way because of the bolts. And as I said, that's not really a problem with the Airhead Pro. Specifically, that's just Arca Swiss. Now I've got a Arca Swiss plate on this tripod head and it's the, the screw type. I really don't like the screw type. I much prefer quick release levers because this is what I've been used to with the Manfrotto. I really like this way of doing things. The next thing I don't like about this uh, tripod head is the, is the quick release. Uh, when you lock it down, it's, it's a little bit stiff to lock it down, uh, especially compared to the to the Manfrotto, which you know, I really like. You just kind of place it in and push it down. And it just snaps in place. It's much quicker and easier. But the thing I really don't like about this one is that it requires a lot of force to, to release it. And what's more is you've got this, what I thought first of all was like a cool little feature, uh, was their way of kind of implementing a locking pin so you can't just release it. But you've got to pull this locking pin uh, this way and then you've got to push the uh, the lever in the opposite direction and it's just a bit awkward because you're pulling and you're pushing at the same time uh, and also it needs a ton of force to release I mean oh man there you go that's how much force it re is is required to release this thing and as you can see with that kind of force you quickly ruin the anodized surface of this nice orange lever here and that moves on to the next point, is that literally after the first time I used that lever, I had scratched off the anodized surface. Now, I'm not sure if that is because it is poorly anodized. I don't really think so, but honestly, I feel it's just a bit of an oversight with the, de with the design. You've just got two metal parts just rubbing together, and of course, it's just gonna ruin the surface of it. And this is 130 pounds, and after the first use, it's kind of depreciated in value. 
you know, with, with a lot of my photography gear, I like to keep it in very nice condition. And that is because a lot of the times I might sell it in the future if I upgrade. And this straight away, I just feel like I've lost money on the first use. And when you compare it to, to the Manfrotto, I've, as I said, I've had this for coming up to 10 years now. I don't know how many thousands of times I've used this lever, but honestly, there are just some small little marks on it and that is it. I'm not too sure if this is anodized or maybe it's like a, I don't know, like a ceramic coating or something, but it's got hardly any marks on it whatsoever. And the same goes for this quick release plate. Another con that I didn't really like about this is that while I was actually filming this video, I realized that this little lever here, this locking lever is actually really loose. And then I looked at it closely and I see that it's got, it's meant to have two bolts to uh, keep it in place. It's actually missing one. And this is why this is so loose because it looks like this, this bolt that secures this lever hasn't really been fitted too well. I think they should have put some, you know, some lock thread on it or something to just stop it from coming out. I've been using this for one week in Berlin and that is it. And I didn't even use it that much during the time I was there. So yeah, quite disappointed because that bolt has just gone missing now and it's a really small one. It's gonna be difficult to, to find and replace that. So overall, I'm not really impressed with this, especially for the price that I paid. It looks like a really nice tripod head um, at first glance, but yeah, once you start using it, I'm, I'm not too sure if it's, if it's that good. Gonna attempt to send this back. I'm really not too sure what they're gonna say because obviously this is all scratched now and hopefully I'm gonna be able to get my, my money back. I've never used any of three-legged things before. A lot of their other products, they, they look really interesting uh, and they've got plenty of good reviews on Amazon and on other sites. So yeah, I mean, if you've got one yourself, please let me know uh, how you got on with this, especially the, the anodized lever. I'd be very interested to know if other people, uh, if there's a scratch and, it's, and if the lever is really difficult to use like mine. So it looks like I'm still on the lookout for a nice lightweight tripod head. I see that Manfrotto have bought out some new ones since I, since I last purchased this, which are much more lighter in weight. Uh, I think I might go back to Manfrotto, who knows. Anyway, that is it for today. Hopefully you found this review useful and I'll catch you later.